Today we're spending our day at the east district of the Sawara National Park. We stopped by the visitor center, saw a 20 minute movie and saw a talk about the summer monsoons and how that impacts the growth of the Sawaras. And now we're gonna go for a bike ride on the Cactus Drive Loop. This was our first bike ride since we hit the road. Yes, after over six months of lugging our bikes around on the back of our RV, we were finally going to use them for a proper bike ride together. The Cactus Forest Loop Drive is an eight mile scenic drive through some of the most stunning scenery in Saguaro East. Although many people choose to drive it, the route also makes for a beautiful bike ride. And at only eight miles, it's not a long route, but it is hilly. In fact, we were warned by several people to go slowly down the first downhill at the start of the ride, since there's a sharp turn at the bottom, which has caught many riders off guard. We store our bikes on a rack on the back of our RV. If you're interested to learn more about that, we have a blog post about it on our blog at adventurousway.com. See the link to the blog post in the video description. The bikes also fit nicely in the back of the truck cab without removing any wheels. So that's how we carry them when we're just taking them out for the day. Along the way, we stopped at the Desert Ecology Trail. With no bike lock, we chose instead to walk our bikes around this quarter mile footpath. There are informational signs along the way which told us about the plants and animals of the Sonoran Desert, much like the Desert Discovery Trail in Saguaro West. So what did you think of the bike ride? I thought that was incredible. That was, we, we met some cyclists just beforehand and they said that was one of the most beautiful eight mile bike rides they've done. I, yeah, I'd agree. That's, yeah. that's pretty spectacular. And it was uh, eight miles long yeah. and it took us about an hour, 20 minutes. We stopped a lot and we did the ecology trail in the middle as well. We walked through that. It yeah. was also really nice. Yeah, a lot of pullouts, a lot of places to take photos and uh, you could spend a lot longer, I think, than we did there. Yeah. But we did it in, what, hour and a half? Yeah. So hour and a half total time and just under an hour of actual cycle time. And uh, yeah, good fun. Yeah, it was really cool to see Sawaros right next to us and taller than us, even on the bikes. It was a really cool experience. I'm glad we brought our bikes with us on this trip. Yeah, I'm somewhat ashamed to say this is the first time I've used the bike since we put it on the trailer back in San Francisco at the end of July. So um, yeah. It's my second time. Hopefully. Here's the many more. Totally. We made it back to the visitor center by early afternoon, just in time for lunch. We didn't find any picnic tables, but a nice bench nestled in the desert garden outside the visitor center worked perfectly. 
On the third day of exploring the Saguaro National Park, we are on the east side and we are going to hike on Tanka Verde Ridge Trail. It is an in and out trail, so we're not going to go all the way through, but at some point we'll pick a turnaround point. We'll have to watch for the weather, because in the afternoon uh, there's a chance of rain. We've just come across a little sign here saying please register, so I guess that's what we need to do. Oh, there's one person before us. Someone else on the trail? Yeah, one person. Nice. What's their name? Caesar Meek? Well, if we see someone who looks like a Caesar, we will say hello. Can you stand next to it so we can get a comparison for size? Yeah, but I'm not touching it. This thing is evil. Which was this? Was this? This the... is a choya. It's a, I think it's a teddy bear choya. No, I, I think... Is it chain fruit choya? I think it's... No, it could be chain fruit. Because yeah, yeah, I think anyway. the teddy one is more this, Yeah, this is the chain, chain fruit choya. And it's basically choya evil. That's what I'm learning. These, these tiny little barbs will hook into you. And as soon as they're caught into you, the end falls off and then they, they carry with you, also stabbing you the entire time. We have hiked for a mile now, and now we are on, on the ridge, and now we can see both sides of the ridge. The trail's pretty easy going. There's nothing too, too dramatic here. It's kind of hard packed desert floor. But the views are pretty good. We can see either side of the ridge for miles and miles and miles. Pretty cool to look out and see the saguaro out into the distance. Well, the sun's coming out. Looks like that rain's staying away. That's good. We have hiked for about an hour now. We have uh, ascended uh, around 700 feet in uh, 1.4 miles. And uh, the weather still looking good. Actually, the clouds are clearing and the storm radar says that the, now the rain, predicted rain has been pushed to three o'clock, not two o'clock. So I said, let's keep going for another hour and then let's check in then. So this looks like a saguaro. It's about the same size as the barrel cactus, but you can tell it's a saguaro because it grows straight and it doesn't have hooks on the, on the, on the ends of the spikes. And this saguaro is old. Even though the saguaro is about two feet tall, it's probably around 30 years old. One of the things we learned yesterday from the rangers is that the saguaro, they don't grow above, say, 4,000, 4,500 feet. So as we're hiking up this ridge, we're getting to about 4,000 feet. I think we're about 3,800 right now. And you can see around me, the saguaro are really thinning out. There's far fewer of them than there were down below in the, in the valley. And just look around there. There's hardly, hardly anything there. Okay, maybe I lied. We've just come over that little mound there and there's a load more saguaro in front of us. But you can kind of see towards the top of the peak up there, apart from the lone one on the top that's just sitting there just to be the exception to the rule, it has definitely thinned out up there. Look at those blue things over there. Looks like maybe it's a water staff. Let's yeah. Check it out. Let's go see. Oh, there's even a path over here. Uh, they do look like jugs, so there's none potable on them. There's a load more down there there's as well. There's more down there. Looks like maybe the rangers are leaving supplies up here. Here for comparison is a barrel cactus. You can tell because the spikes are curved in the ends and the whole cactus is leaning towards the sun. While on the trail, we heard a noise and stopped. We spotted a couple of deer up the hillside. They had seen us and were staring straight at us. Very slowly, we took out our cameras and started filming. We stayed still on the trail, but they didn't like our presence. They were stomping their feet and flashing their tails. But the strangest thing was the sound.
We found out later from a ranger that these behaviours are designed not only to alert other deer in the area to a potential danger, but to try to startle a hidden predator, in this case us, into giving away their position. Eventually the deer ran off, up the hill and over the ridge. But we felt very privileged to have seen that display so close up though. That's incredible, I've never seen anything like that. That was such a bizarre sound they were making. Okay, so it's 11 o'clock, and uh, how much we have hiked? Uh, we have hiked 2.4 miles, and we've climbed about 1,200 feet. So the rain storm app says it might be here around 3 o'clock, but that could change and come here sooner. I think let's just do a little bit more. Maybe get to the top of the next next little uh, plateau, mm -hmm. and then maybe have some lunch. Yeah, have some snacks. Yeah, and then uh, stroll back down. Sounds good. We just bumped into someone who is a volunteer doing trail patrol for the National Park Service here and he he said he'd hiked about four and a half miles up the trail and now he's hiking back down again and he said there's a real nice stopping point just a little bit further up from where we are so that's going to be our lunch stop I think. He also said the the water that we saw earlier the the blue containers they are as we suspected they belong to the National Park Service and they're part of a program to control buffalo grass. So buffalo grass is an invasive grass species they have in the park here. So yeah, good to know. The weatherman was wrong. It was supposed to start raining only at three o'clock, but now it's noon and it's raining. Uh, I think we need to go that way actually. Okay. So. You've led me astray. Yeah, I did. Here in Tucson, they have two rainy seasons. They have the winter rains and the summer rains. And in the summer rains, that's what they consider their monsoon season. Monsoon rains can be really heavy and really isolated. And when they hit, they can flood the roads. And to encourage people to not drive in flooded roads, they have big signs saying, do not enter when flooded. They'll put barriers up, all these sorts of things to stop people going in. But people are people, and sometimes people do go in. So they have this rule, this law, called the stupid motorist law, where if you deliberately bypass a sign or other motorists who've stopped, and you drive into one of these flooded washers, and you get stuck and need rescuing, in addition to charging you the full price of the recovery, they'll also charge you $2,000 fine. To, to prevent people or discourage people from driving in in those conditions. But the fact they have it tells me people probably still do it. So lesson learned, do not drive into washers when they're flooded in Tucson. No matter how much you think you can get through it, just don't risk it. this rain? I would say this is probably spitting. It's a long way off drizzle. It's pretty light though. I would yeah I'd say I would say it's spitting with rain right now. Or in British maybe it doesn't even count as rain? No I think I think we are open about the fact that rain is rain and we do have sunshine. It is a common misconception that it's never ever sunny in England. It is. We have sun. Three days a year there is sun. We get very good though at describing rain. It is 1.20 and we are back at the trailhead. It took us about four hours to do 
5.6 miles uh, with 1500 feet elevation gain. And we managed to escape the rain. Now the rain forecast says it's only going to rain at 5 o'clock.